Uber CEO Dara Khosrowshahi was in the news this week doubting Tesla's robo-taxi on the Logan Bartlett show, spawning dozens of headlines from the FUD machine. But hey, let's hear what he has to say. Probably on a daily basis, 100 to uh, 120 people dying every day, yep. right? As a result of, uh, of accidents. Um, so if you get into a situation where you have robot drivers that are 10 times better than human drivers, right? On a good day, robot drivers will be responsible for five fat fatalities versus a bad day when they be responsible for 20 fatalities. And that's unacceptable, I think, to society, right? And those are robot drivers that are 10 times better than human drivers. Uh, and I just think that society accepts human fallibility quite readily, but definitely does not accept, call it, um, robot uh, or companies making mistakes, et cetera. There's, there's a much, much higher bar. So, you know, logic would dictate that if robots are twice as good a driver or three times as good a driver as, as humans, that should, that's good for society going forward. But I honestly don't know if society is ready to accept that. Yeah. Wow. I think society accepts human fallibility quite readily. I guess he's never met a grieving mother of a child lost in a car accident before. Or maybe he doesn't know that people go to prison for manslaughter in a car accident. Yeah, case. I mean, we don't accept human fallibility quite readily. Uh, for His example of 10 times safer robo taxis is exactly where regulators would step in and practically make them mandatory. Just for some context, seatbelts reduce your risk of death by 50% in the case of an accident. It took less than 10 years from seatbelts being installed in the first cars in the late 1950s to them being mandatory in all vehicles, excluding buses by 1968 in the United States. So that's a 50% decrease in the chance of death if you're wearing one. And his own example uh, of robo taxis, that would be a 90% decrease in chance of death. And he's saying that we might not even adopt it at all. Is, yeah. Is, uh, well, and, and he's using an example that is there is no example of. He says that when we think of robots, and I'm like, there are no robots now. He right. used robots, <laughs> and then he put corporations in the place of robots. He's like, we don't accept death from corporations. I'm like, we don't accept death yeah, from- I'm sorry. Yes, we do. Oh, we do. <laughs> Boeing is still a company. Sorry. Um, are we upset about it? Yes. But their planes used to not fall out of the sky, right. and now they do. It's not like, it's not like uh, Boeing was like, hey, everybody, we know that all these planes keep falling out of the sky and we've made a safer plane and everyone would have gone yay and then all of a sudden their planes are like oh oh no our planes are falling out of the sky we had made uh, plane travel safe since like the 60s and now it has gotten worse that right. is why we are mad at these companies it's so stupid and so is this guy just a moron well he's the ceo of uber so let's listen to some more of his other points and listen it's also not clear to me that the average person you know tesla owner or owner of any other car is going to want to have that car be ridden in by a complete stranger. Mother that's your whole business model. You were able to convince 5 million people to drive complete strangers around. And that was last year. They had 3.9 million drivers in 2020. That's more than the population of Connecticut driving complete strangers around the world in the middle of a pandemic. Oh, he goes on. It just so happens to that probably the times at which you're going to want your Tesla are probably going to be the same times that uh, ridership is going to be at a peak, right? It's so dumb. It's brilliant. How? It's just dumb. How does he get to make this argument? Again, the, that is his whole business. Right. I mean, his own arguments against robo taxis are the exact same arguments you could lob against Uber. And yet Uber has become a success. So why is he so negative? Well, he isn't an expert on the subject. He's the CEO of Uber. He can't let investors hear that Tesla is going to succeed and be the only player in the robo taxi future because that would mean that Tesla is going to come eat their lunch. Oh, so that's why he says things like this. You know, we've had to learn to build out a system that's able to um, make the everything work for both the rider and the driver with economics at work. It's taken us 15 years. It's taken us tens of billions of dollars of capital. And we can provide that instantly to a partner. Uh, and, you know, hopefully Tesla will be one of those partners. You never know. Um, I'm sorry. They took 15 years and billions of dollars to figure out how to get the relationship between the driver and the car correct. When 
We don't need the driver anymore. And, so, and it used to, here's the, what the relationship used to be. Taxi! <laughs> That's, all, I'm sorry. They, it took billions of dollars to go, taxi! Yeah, I mean, he keeps talking about the infrastructure that they built. I'm like, you didn't build the cars. You didn't make the drivers. You didn't make the roads. You didn't make the customers. You built a little app. That's great. It's a great you, app. You built a little app. You screwed over taxi drivers. You, I mean, it, all for the sake of, of a well, cheaper ride. I mean, and, that's fine. And the other thing is he makes it sound like they went into each town and city and had a nice dialogue and discussion. No, you just dumped your app in each city and town and sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. But that's not, I mean, what? Some, sometimes they decided that it was illegal and then they they put a bunch of stipulations on you. If you want to operate in our city, you're going right. to have to do this or that. And he makes it sound like, oh, that's a hard thing to do. It's like, no, you made it hard on yourself because you, I mean, he didn't do that. Uber did. Right. He started in 2017. He's not even the founder of the company. No. He's acting like he invented uh, taxis. Yeah. And and by the way, Tesla is never going to work with Uber because Tesla even has it in their agreement that you can't use any other network but their network. <laughs> There's another part of this interview where he goes like, you know, we only take 20 percent. And so the driver can keep the other 80 percent. And then, you know, well, it also goes to insurance. I'm like, yeah, it goes to insurance and gas right. and tires and the engine. Right. They don't and, get to keep it. They don't get to keep yeah. 80 percent. I, I just think that's funny because he wants to continue to keep the 20 percent when he hands it off to an AV partner. Right. Um, which, again, like, oh, I guess if nobody could figure out how to make an well, app. Tesla's already made the app. We've already seen screenshots of that's it. True. So. Bye bye. Goodbye, Uber. I know, man. And what I think is crazy is that the Logan Bartlett show, he has 40,000 subscribers, which is great. I think his show is awesome. Uh, the, this particular show has about 6,000 views right now. Mm -hmm. um, 6,000 views, and it's getting posted on giant national. Right. How did they hear about this? Right. How did they? I mean, obviously, it's the CEO of Uber and, and good on Logan for getting him on a podcast. But like, really? Press releases went out. They they said, oh, oh, he says that Tesla is dumb. We're going to print that story. Sounds good. That's going on the front page there, Bob. Funny, fun, fun, fun. Also, why does Dara look like he's Mickey Mouse? Did they do that on purpose? Is that a, is that a practical joke? I don't know. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for watching Now You Know Clips. You can watch full episodes of Tesla Time News on Tuesdays and in-depth on Fridays. Just click the link down below and head over to the Now You Know channel.